Let us pray. Lord, we gather to honor and celebrate more than 28 years of service given to our nation by our friend and our colleague, Colonel J. Campbell. His wisdom, his dedication, his loyalty to our country and to our Marine Corps will always be remembered. Lord, we know that the Campbell family had to adapt to many changes over the years. His wife acting, his children, Britton, Elsa, and Evan, they made many sacrifices, even in their own personal time, so that he could take work, related phone calls, leave, take care of rings, or deploy to fire related places. Through it all, the Lord, his family were faithful, they religiously and unwaveringly supported and loved him. We pray your continued blessings upon the Campbell family as they journey together in this next phase, retirement. May they be blessed with a strong network of friends to make the journey that lies ahead easy, fun, and enjoyable. Keep them vigorous in their body, mind, spirit, and give them great health. Today we gather to proudly say, well done, Dr. Campbell. You have trained, you have impacted many over the years for such a time as this. We have to watch. Thank you. We pray that you will enjoy life a little bit more. You will enjoy the peace and the quietness of waking up when you want to, doing the things that you wish to, and living life even more around your family. May the presence of our Lord lead us through our time together. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now taking his position in the reviewing area, the retiring officer, Major General Albert L. Ford, Jr. Please rise for honors to General Major General Ward.
Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America, Colonel J. Campbell, United States Marine Corps. I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication to our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Joseph R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. Dear Colonel Campbell, on the occasion of your retirement, I want to thank you for your leadership, service, and commitment to our Corps. Although I am unable to attend the ceremony, please know that I and thousands of Marines you have affected along the way are with you in spirit. As you transition after more than 28 years as a United States Marine, I hope you will take a few minutes to reflect on all you have accomplished. After earning your wings of gold as a CH-53 Echo Qualified Naval Aviator, you are commended for your service as a Weapons and Tactics Instructor, Marine Heavy Helicopter Squadron 363, where you flawlessly organized, planned, and executed the Weapons and Tactics Training Program for your squadron, accomplishing 68 aircrew and pilot qualifications in a two-month period. In the field grade ranks, you are privileged to serve as Commanding Officer, Marine Heavy Helicopter Squadron 366, Marine Aircraft Group 29, during this period, your prioritization of limited resources resulted in the Flying Squadron, Squadron Flying 2,500 mishap free flight hours, completing 45,000 maintenance man hours of labor. Furthermore, your forethought and dedication to mission success propelled the Hammerheads to lead the Marine Aircraft Group 29 in the sole support community in support of two Marine Expeditionary Force and Marine Special Operations Command Units. In the rank of Colonel, you currently serve as Air Officer, Deputy Assistant Chief of Staff G3, 2nd Marine Division, where you have made contributions to the division that have enhanced warfighting capability for the Marine Expeditionary Force and increased the lethality of our subordinate formations. Moreover, as a senior mediator and aviation subject matter expert, you oversaw the coordination, execution, and supervision of recurring Milner Strike live fire designated shoots. Your dedication has set the conditions for the Corps' continued success at long after your departure. On behalf of the Marine Corps, the Marines who serve with you and who will serve after you, thank you for your devotion. Your contributions to the Corps' warfighting legacy and its future are immeasurable. As you depart, you go with the gratitude, admiration, and affection of your fellow Marines. I wish you the very best as you begin the next phase of your life. Fair winds and following seas. Sincerely, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Flag of the United States of America. This flag was flown above two Marine Expeditionary Force on April 20, 2024. Colonel J. Campbell. This flag symbolizes a nation's appreciation for unwavering faithfulness and dedication and service to the national defense of the United States of America. Few can hope or strive to serve with their country as you have. Commending the years of sacrifice is the flag which you fought to protect and that for which it stands. Freedom. Let this flag serve as a reminder that. The honor, courage, and commitment with which you serve will not be overlooked or forgotten. Although you are no longer served amongst our ranks, you will forever be the United States Army. Some of the Now being escorted to alongside Colonel Campbell and his wife, Bob. Dear Mrs. Campbell, congratulations on the occasion of Jade's retirement from active duty. More importantly, thank you for your willingness to also serve. Trish and I fully appreciate the sacrifice associated with the career in the Marine Corps. You, Brayden, Elise, and Evan have endured the moves, the separation, and the long hours associated with Jake's commitment to his fellow Marines and the Corps. I hope you know that you have also positively influenced countless others along the way and truly made a difference. As you embark on the next chapter of your life, please know that you will always remain a part of the Marine Corps family. Once again, thank you for all you have done to take care of and support our Marines and their families. I wish you and Jake the very best. Sincerely, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps.
first and foremost, let's start with a round of applause. Okay? Again, I would tell you, I'm going to start with a thank you. And I said I was going to say thank you a bunch um, during your retirement. That's what this is about today. These retirement ceremonies are very, very much a formal acknowledgement of the many years, the sacrifice, all of the time and attention you put into being a dedicated and committed Marine officer and an enlisted Marine. And that doesn't happen without this collective family that's here in the room to your right and around you. And the Marines from your past who have come forward today to celebrate with you a successful career. And then, of course, all these folks on the other side of the room in uniform that have served alongside and are witnesses to excellence. And that'll be the theme today. I'm going to go back in time a little bit um, because, again, really at 33 years of raising your hand, making a decision back in 1991 to serve is a long time. And there's a lot to capture within that time period. But before I continue, I do want to acknowledge our band back here, whose presence today, whose service in song today makes this truly a ceremony worth attending. So thank you to the band. So I said I was going to go backwards in time a little bit. And it's really Jade's day to talk a little a lot about what you've done. Your choice, okay? Um, it's your day. But he won't brag about himself. And this is a man who, back in 1991, as a 17-year-old, decided to enlist. Okay? And with some convincing and some cajoling from one of our back-swinging recruiters, his mom and dad said, okay. We believe that he's committed. We believe that he's serious about this thing that is the Marine Corps in service to our country. And they allowed you to go forward and stand on yellow footprints and become a United States Marine. And his first job, first indications is that he was going to be chosen to do something hard. It was a power plant, repair, repair me on EA-6Bs, our electronic attack aircraft. I'm going to try to avoid acronyms as much as I can because there was a bunch of them in the award citations. But our electronic attack platforms, they're low density, high demand, no fail. There's a few of them. They've got to be worked on. They've got to be done. That work has to be precise, accurate, so that that platform can make its way into fighting formation so that the Marine Corps can do the things that the Marine Corps does. That was his first job as a young enlisted Marine. And he served honorably in that job for a couple of years. And of course, because of his intellect, because of who he is, was picked up for the enlisted commissioning program. Okay, he went to MESEP, he went to Boulder, got a degree in mechanical engineering, not mechanical. Was it mechanical? Okay, I don't want to short you from electronic engineering, okay? Because they fight, engineers fight about those two distinctions. But it was mechanical engineering. Um, again, another indication that Jade was more than capable of doing hard things. He became a helicopter pilot after, after going through flight school and the basic school. And then his first assignment was out at HMH 366 out in Hawaii. And from there he did several Westpac deployments, participated in disaster relief operations, supporting the JTF. And then he continued to make himself eligible for hard assignments. He became a test pilot, a hard cut, a hard selection. Not just anybody becomes a test pilot because of what it entails. Jade was selected for that program, became a test pilot out of Patuxent River. He also, after that, went back to the fleet and continued to operate again in a different squadron at that point in time with deployments to OEF, right? And you took a debt out to Djibouti, Djibouti, right? Out to the Horn of Africa, Afghanistan, Horn of Africa, tough assignments, tough cuts. Jade has commanded a squadron, a heavy lift squadron, 366, which is now deactivated, right? But it's a squadron that requires an individual, a very specific individual, to go out and be in charge of a 
group of Marines and sailors that are going to generate detachments, go out and fly tough missions in the hardest of circumstances, in the hardest of conditions. Jade's test pilot time comes back to him <clears throat> because they're going to ask him again to go and oversee operations testing and evaluation for new platforms, the CH-53 Kilo. And he oversees that program. Then he goes to NATO headquarters in Norfolk and works there overseeing operational testing and evaluation. Jade has done the types of things as a flying pilot inside of a squadron, as a commanding officer of a squadron. He has gone and done the types of things as a test pilot, as an OIC for our operations testing and evaluation program to make sure that new platforms are put together and can produce the capabilities that we need them to produce when employed. He is also concurrently, while assigned to some of those duties, managed to go and knock out a master's degree. And then goes to McMoore and gets another master's degree. And then post squadron command, post time, right across the river at New River, running the program that was going to bring on the first CH-53 kilos into New River, into the 2nd Marine Aviation Wing, he comes here to 2nd Marine Division. So I go backwards in time because where he started and how he was supported by his family at the onset, how he was supported all the way through a career that took him into austere places and conditions and combat operations in places like Afghanistan and to tough duties, you know, Horn of Africa is one of those hard places to describe, but from that small base on the Horn of Africa, we do a lot of operations and we support a lot of contingencies and crisis response operations that we don't always talk about and they are typically out of sight, but Jade was there. So when we received him here in the 2nd Marine Division back in 2022, he arrived at the same time I arrived, uh, Jade comes with all of that experience, operational experience technical experience in terms of operation testing and evaluation. Administrative experience because he has been asked to do hard things in a lot of different places and spaces and I don't, I haven't talked about all the administrative assignments you had along the way. He comes fully capable and prepared to operate at the division level, supporting 14,000 Marines and Sailors inside the division. It is not a small formation and our Marines and Sailors are distributed around the globe. On any given day, we have Marines as far afield as Okinawa, sometimes in CENTCOM, the Middle East. Oftentimes, almost always, we have Marines in the European theater, on the African continent, sometimes down in South America, and even the southwest border in support of NORTHCOM and the Department of Homeland Security. We do it all. And Jade comes aboard as the assistant G3, but the number one professional as it pertains to aviation inside the division. He is our lead aviation specialist. And so he oversees everything that we train to do as it pertains to applying air power, training our Marines and sailors to apply that air power in concert with operations. He oversees the application of the weapons the destructive aspects, the orchestration of flying, things that move through the air, with things that shoot through the air, with bullets that emerge from the ground. He orchestrates all of the training that prepares our Marines and sailors to go forward and operate. He oversees that training. He oversees the assignment of our aviation specialists, our aviation professionals, to each one of those units that we have to build on a day-to-day -day basis so they can go out and succeed in the missions that they will be apply to. Jade does that in concert with a very, very busy operations officer in an operations section. And they are represented here, but I can't begin to account for all of the things that they do within that 14,000 individuals to build formations that provide combat capability on a day-to-day -day basis. And then they operate with the logistics element inside the Marine Expeditionary Force, the aviation element inside the Marine Expeditionary Force, the, Mar the Marine Information Group, the MACTAP Information Group, all of the what we call beeps and squeaks, signals, intelligence, electronic warfare. Jade 
does his work inside of the operations shop to make sure that everything is aligned, make sure that we orchestrate and build the formations in a way that allows them to be successful, not if called, but when called. And I speak to the family because he probably hasn't told you all the things that he's been involved in. He hasn't told you that his fingerprints will be on the next generation of Marines who will fly the CH-53K for the next 25 to 30 years. That's how long we fly these platforms once they come in. And then we have to argue for dollars and resources from our legislature, from our government, to buy new things. But Jade makes sure that that aircraft that was built, produced, and will be tasked to perform operations, he's had his fingerprints on that program for a couple minutes. Right? And you've got hours flying the experimental aircraft, having discussions with the engineers and the builders of those aircraft to make sure that it will live and thrive for 25 to 30 years. And then inside the division, Jade, you've just done things in a way that I would tell you, at a very, very busy operational time, the two years as we emerged from COVID, guess what? We have a shooting war in the Ukraine. We have a shooting war in the Middle East. We have a resumption of high tempo operations with a smaller force, broadly speaking. So the demand signal is high, the force is smaller, and we need experts like Jade to do the work. We've got to get it right the very first time. And Jade, you've done that very, very well. You've been excellent. The word picture, the word cloud, as I said, a career that, through the arc of his career, could be underpinned by a commitment to service and excellence in service. If you were to go back and review not just the awards, but all of his fitness reports, going all the way back to when he was a captain, the reason he was selected to be a test pilot, pretty clear, he's the best of breed. Word cloud, professionalism, competence, Technically proficient. He's a, he's a Marine Air Warfighting Tactics instructor. Best of the best. Selected for that course and then brought back to their squadrons to teach, train, and prepare pilots to fly into harm's way. He's one of those guys. He's a test pilot. He's overseeing the programs. The word cloud is pretty distinct. In my time working with Jade, I would tell you, the additional words, just a quiet profession, dependable, utterly reliable in everything that we ask him to do. Jade is able to step up and step in anywhere we need him to step up and step into. He has served as the G3, he has served as the chief of staff for the division, doesn't matter. When Jade steps into the office, there's not a concern in the world. He's going to ask for assistance when he needs it. And if he's not in the office, it's because he's just taking care of his business. He's handling things in the three shop and making the machine run, making the machine run. That's all we want from our professionals on any given day. And Jade, I would tell you that as you now officially retire, um, you are the type of individual that I certainly want my son to be. And for your kids who are here today, I would tell you that your father, um, more than anything else, has gotten something right that I think all of us really, really want to do. And the fact that you're here in chairs today, 23 years of marriage, the kids are all here, you don't look too grumpy, okay? Everyone all looks happy to be here with dad, okay? Hey, that's a man who, despite all the accolades and the awards and the Legion of Merit and all the things that we've talked about today, the mark of excellence, the mark of getting it right, is when you have your retirement ceremony and your family's in the chair. That means he's a man that can truly do it all. As my father would have said, a renaissance man. I know he works on cars, pass him every morning, or he's passing me every morning, riding his bike into work. He takes care of his mind, he takes care of his body, he takes care of his family. Okay, his extended family who's here supporting him today, friends who have come from far afield to celebrate with you today, you can be very, very proud. Very, very proud of what you've done internal to the service and certainly how you've done it with your family 
with your extended family, and with your friends and your colleagues who have been proud to serve alongside. Jade, I, I really do appreciate the opportunity just to participate in your day and the opportunity to go back in time and try to take all the alphabet soup of acronyms and just explain a little bit about what you've done during your time. You're a teacher, you're a scholar, you're a leader, you're a warrior in every sense of the word. Congratulations, you've done it right, my friend. Semper Fidelis. Thank you very much for the kind words and, and putting a really special personal touch on it. Darrell Wiley, thanks for coming so much. Dan and uh, Garrett, uh, thank you so much for coming. Kyle, Sergeant Major, Master Guns, uh, distinguished guests, um, leaders, Marines, thank you so much for coming, family and friends. Uh, I have a few notes here. Let's see if I can uh, stick stick to my main point here. Uh, I, it's been a, it's been a long time, a long career. I have a, a million things I want to say, but I I recognize that for all of you, especially those of you in uniform, have already put in a 50-hour week plus, and I am the thing between you and your family and uh, getting back home. So it means the world to me. Uh, band sounding exceptional. If there's one thing that can put a, make it feel classy, um, you do it every time, and every time feels so good. Uh, it sounds so good, uh, just true professional. So thanks for the follow me, band. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm glad my family got to experience that. That means everything. So anyway, I'm going to keep my remarks uh, brief, and uh, but I do want to uh, thank a, a, a few things and thank a few of you in particular. Uh, Carol, I don't see you. But uh, Carol, anybody who received an email with directions and you, know, you got an RSVP and all that, that was Carol Banks. Uh, awesome. Rockstar. Did so much. Uh, Sergeant Major Fincham, uh, you know, thank you so much for putting this together. There you go. Thanks. And uh, Master Guns and, and Master Arm Brewer, uh, I appreciate all of that went behind this. And I know all, full, full court press from the G3 Marines to, and headquarters battalion to do this. So thank you to all of you. Um, as the, the CG, or uh, former CG, I know, I caught you between jobs, so. <laughs> anyway, as he said, um, retirement ceremonies shouldn't be optional. There is a, the tendency is real. You get, you spend about a year plus with this massive transition checklist of a million things to do. It's overwhelming. And you can easily get lulled like I did, where I was just like, oh, I don't know. Just, we got enough going on, we're moving house, we're doing all this, let's just, let's just skate off in, into you know, the next thing and relax a little bit. And uh, just like you said, General, uh, Autumn was like, no, nope, this isn't about you. This is for our family. <laughs> this is to recognize the people who have supported you along the way. So um, I'll allude to that later, but that insight and judgment and support has been key throughout our, our marriage. So um, I, I do want to comment a little bit about why I've served in the Marine Corps since 1991, the things that have kept me around. Uh, several places during my uh, career, we all make decisions, stay in, get out. Um, and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about, I feel lucky, extremely lucky to be here. Uh, we all have friends, Marines that we've served with who um, paid the ultimate sacrifice um, and are not here. And we're not privileged enough to make it to their a retirement ceremony. So uh, I just want to honor the, the fact that I feel extremely fortunate uh, to be here today. Uh, I've been, you know, like all of us, we've, been, we've all had some close calls and I feel uh, the, the story for me is, you know, it's probably better to be lucky than good because there's people who are far better than me um, who, who uh, had a hard time. And so uh, I feel lucky to be here and blessed uh, to be after five plus deployments 2005, a whole bunch of hours, flight hours, combat tours, all those things, I feel lucky to be here. Um, but it hasn't, it's, it's been a labor of love for sure. And that's, I'll get back to why I stayed in the Marine Corps when I made conscious decisions along the way. What it comes down to is I was having fun. It's, it's a fun job to be a helicopter pilot. But even more than that, it's awesome to be by, surrounded by professionals that you respect and love and enjoy their time. And um, that's what just always came, comes back to me. Things like Marine Corps balls, you know? Right when you're sure you're gonna get out of the Marine Corps and you have 
the greatest night of your life with your friends, doing ridiculous things. Uh, those, those things kept me around, uh, even in spite of, I'll talk about the tension between <clears throat> being a Marine and being a, being a father, uh, all those things as well. So that's what I've loved about the Marine Corps. Um, uh, Elise, it just, I think it was about a month ago, they were asking me about, you know, have you always been like this? Have you always been this kind of a person or did the Marine Corps make you this? And I don't even know the answer to that because like the Green Mile, I guess I've been institutionalized, you know, for long <laughs> enough. I, I can't even separate the things in my head that the Marine Corps taught me from what, you know, my family taught me. Um, I have 33 years, my mom passed when I was 32, and I, I literally spent more time being molded by the Marine Corps than my own mom. And uh, that's, that's wild to think about that. So, but, but my dad always instilled in me, you know, uh, the golden rule, character traits from growing up, uh, my family, all those things. Um, but it's the things about the Marine Corps that attracted me from when that first recruiter pitch came. Um, you know, a buddy of mine joined a year before me, and he came back from boot camp leave, and he said, hey, I know you're not interested in joining the Marine Corps, but if you just come and pretend you're interested and talk to the recruiter for 10 minutes, I'll get an extra week of leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I got you. Yeah, whatever. But recruiters are really good. They're really good at their job. And the next thing you know, he's asking me, what's, you know, all these little options out here on the table, these little discs. Or, General, what are they called again? Benefit tags. Benefit tags. <laughs> so, like, which of these appeal to you? And I'm like, adventure? You know, you know leadership? It, not, anyway, I, I was hooked from then on. And, uh, but I really believe that what the Marine Corps has taught me and, and what I can't separate from who I am versus the Marine Corps is just MCDP1 warfighting. Like every time I feel like I want to know what's the right answer, like it's the, the Marine Corps has got it right. Like, you know, selfless leadership, leading people, being, you know, putting others first, uh, whether, you know, that's uh, other Marines, putting the mission, uh, you know, putting everything you got into it. So I just feel like it resonated with me and I don't know chicken or the egg, what came first, but I buy it to this day in my heart of hearts. I love being a Marine. And I believe what that recruiter sold me in 1991. So uh, it's, it's, it's been a privilege uh, for sure. Um, I'll basically, I guess, hit just a little bit now on individual thanks. Um, I'm going to start with Autumn. Um, so we got, she's never known me outside the Marine Corps. So I'm pretty sure if I start like, growing my hair out, she's going to give me a correction and be like, hey, you're looking a little, little sloppy. That's not what I married. <laughs> I married a Marine. You know? So we'll see. But anyway, um, it's, hard. it's hard being a good dad, a good husband, and, and being a good Marine. Some of the, it's, there's a natural tension there. And I can't tell you how many times you know, I, I, call, I call up. And, hey, babe, sorry, I know I told you to be home for dinner. It's not happening tonight. And there's just, that's what it was, you know, as a captain, those years when we had three kids under the age of five, and Autumn wants nothing more in the world than for me to come home from work so she can have, like, 30 minutes of break. And I know I rarely gave that to you. So uh, thank you for everything. Um, the deployments are almost easier because you just do the baton handover and you're gone, you're out of the picture. But it's, it's, it's working those 12, 14, 16 hour days when you're home, but you're not really, you're at WTI or you're at this or that one after another. So um, that tension has always been hard, uh, but Autumn has persevered and always been my compass in terms of making me a better person. You know, we all have that confidant that we talk to who, who gives us a reality check, um, that's you, babe. So thank you for making me a better person, a better father, uh, a better Marine. Uh, I love you. Uh, to my kids, uh, we've moved 14 times. I think Braden is probably about 12 of those. Anyway, um, we've moved a lot. I, you know, the hardest ones, I think, you tell me, but it felt like the ones where you were in middle and high school. 
moving several times, making the best of friends as you do, and then getting plucked out, and Dad says we're moving to Australia, which is kind of cool and exciting, but then leaving not so much cool and exciting, because those are really good friends. So um, you didn't have a choice, you didn't sign up for it, but you just got told to do it. Um, and I know I wasn't there as much as I would have liked to have been. So you guys are all three awesome, awesome kids. It's been so much fun watching you guys grow up, and, and uh, I'm your biggest fan and supporter. So just keep doing your thing, and uh, I'll support you. I love you guys. Uh, to all my family over here and friends, some of y'all over there too, because it's it just feels like to me like I can't separate my family, proper family, sitting in the front row that I share DNA with, from like the people that are my married family who Autumn brought in, and then people like the Williams. Like no kidding, we all have in the Marine Corps, we have a family care plan. I think we asked you, but it was just like implied. If any, God forbid anything happens, Malcolm and Chris are gonna like raise our kids until my sister can come and execute our will. Like that's how good those friendships are. And of course, Malcolm's a, a, a former Marine, next door neighbors, all that stuff. And um, anyway, just those things we just take for granted. Um, I just, Andy, Andy Needles uh, and family here today, thank you so much for coming up. I, I, Andy and I met at OCS in 1996. And he's like, I'm, I'm C and he's N, so we're like kind of standing across the squad bay, like kind of like trying to see if we can make each other smile <laughs> when the drill instructor's not looking. But no kidding, as the Marine Corps is just weird, we go to flight school together, we both select the same platform, we both get orders to Hawaii, and then I live 2132 Bauer Drive, and Andy gets 2134, 2130, you're my next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. <laughs> And so that six years when I did three back-to-back -back UDPs and all the WTIs in between and all that stuff, and Andy did all that, he was the squadron WTI, we were best friends, but no kidding, like we raised each other's kids. Like, we didn't even have, have to ask, we shared a car because we were in sister squadrons. We had one car between us because one of we were like never in the same place together. So like either I was raising his kids or he was raising my kids, I was mowing his grass, he was mowing my grass. That's the family. Those are the things that kept me in the Marine Corps. Um, so that friendship it, and everything has meant the world. So Andy, uh, so great to see you here again. Doing well. Um, I guess I, I'll, I'll kind of close here by just saying thank you to the Marines. Things change so fast. And when I say the Marines, I'll, I'll talk, comment to a few of the younger Marines who, who maybe weren't even in the G3 when I was there, but uh, you know, like Corporal Parker just showed up after I after I left, and here you know he's he's helping out somebody he doesn't even know. But uh, I would just say thank you to the Marines. Um, man, I I really I feel like I need to convey. There's sometimes I get it. I, I walk out and I talk to Marines as as I'm transitioning or former Marines, and they'll be like, ah. Oh. I heard you know, you're getting out because I heard Gen Z is all lazy and I heard the Marine Corps is getting soft and it, it hurts my soul because it's, it's BS. The Marines today don't get sold, don't believe the hype when someone tells you old Corps, new Corps. You are every bit sharper, more capable, more disciplined than I was, than we were in 1991. I can't talk about old core chesty puller, maybe they were really harder and better. But I would tell you, in the 33 years I've been here, don't let anyone sell you short that Gen Z Marines are soft. Uh, I have seen just the opposite of that, the discipline, the critical thinking skills, um, and the Marine, Marine Corps is in good hands. I believe that in my heart of hearts. So uh, it's been awesome. I've loved it. I've loved being in this Corps. Um, I can't separate who I am from it, so it's going to carry on for the rest of my life. But thank you all for coming. Um, I got some you know, refreshments and some food and all that, but I know many of you have to go home and, and work on that tension between uh, your family and the Marine Corps. So if you dart straight for the door, I'll understand why. But for those of you who can, stick around. Please have a drink on me. Uh, bar's open, um, cake, in the back, cake and some food and all that. So. I know I forgot a bunch of people and a bunch of things, but that's all I want to talk about. Thank you. Mm -hmm.